Good morning, boys and girls. We are going to continue with our uh, study of acid-base equilibria. And yesterday, we had introduced the concept of auto-ionization of water and how we derive the um, pH scale from our understanding that um, uh, water breaks down to give us the OH minus and H plus and then uh, the standard, um, under standard conditions, the KW or the equilibrium expression will give us KW is equal to the concentration of OH minus times the concentration of H plus, which is equal to 1 times 10 to the power minus 14, of which we agree that um, uh, that's the basis of the pH scale where we notice that any numbers less than seven, the materials exhibit acidic properties and any values greater than seven, the materials will be exhibiting basic properties while at the value seven itself, it's a neutral substance. And um, we also went on to see the common everyday substances we use in our homes, school, uh, wherever we go, and notice uh, that um, they all show a whole range of pHs with things like uh, citrus fruits, orange, the coke and stuff, all exhibiting acidic properties, while things like milk, We've got a pH of 6 so close to being um, neutral, while other substances uh, exhibited uh, basic properties. So I'm going to continue with that and see, uh, you will notice that where you measure the H3O plus and pH of strong acids, you realize that uh, strong acids like hydrochloric acid and hypochlorite ionize completely in aqueous solution like this. Um, and also in solution of strong monoprotic, mono means one, meaning that when the acid breaks down, it gives away one proton. So in solutions of strong monoprotic acids, such as hydrochloric acid and uh, hypochloric acid, this concentration of the hydronium ion is, equal, is directly equal to the concentration of the acid itself, meaning that the initial concentration of, or, or, or of the acid. So what does that imply? Take, for example, where we are saying if the concentration of hydrochloric acid is 0 0.1 molar, so it automatically means that the concentration of the hydroxonium uh, ion is also 0 0.1 molar and the pH is going to be equal to minus log 0 0.1 which gives us 1. We are saying that because when the hydrochloric acid breaks down in water or on its own, it gives us 1 H plus. So if this concentration is equal to 0 0.10 molar. Then, since the ratios are the same, one is to one, it means that the concentration of H plus ions, which are also going to be produced from 0 0.1 molar concentration of hydrochloric acid, is also equal to be 0 0.1 molar. So we agree that pH is a measure of the concentration of H plus ions. So we said pH, this P means minus log, and then H, it means the concentration of H plus ions. So we, we have got the value of the concentration of H plus, if you say minus log of 0 0.10, you will get this as equal to 1. So it means that the cons the pH of hydrochloric acid is equal to 1.
So, and for that reason, you realize that um, the manipulation of the information you have and how you handle it in chemical reactions is very, very important in determining how um, we are going to, to find the pH of an acid or a base um, during a chemical reaction. Okay. So, for that reason, you realize that um, it is very important for you to understand how do you get data from an experiment and then use the values in your representations and calculations and your results of those uh, calculations, use them to determine um, the pH of a substance. So in a similar manner, we are saying that the concentration of OH minus and the pH of strong bases, you will see that like strong acids, the strong bases also ionize completely in aqueous solution. And here's an example of sodium hydroxide, where sodium hydroxide completely breaks down to give us sodium and OH minus. Barium hydroxide, it also breaks down to give us two OH minus, okay? So in, a, in an example of a basic solution where sodium hydroxide is equal, it's got a concentration of 0 0.05 um, a molar. So we know very well that um, a, to determine pH, so I want you to take note of what we are, what's happening here. We want to find the pH of sodium hydroxide. So this is how things are going to be like. We know we first deal with the information as we have it. We are told that sodium hydroxide will break down to give us um, sodium ions plus OH minus ions. And because this breaks down into in a ratio of 1 is to 1, what it means is that if this is 0 0.05 molar, the initial concentration, if it breaks down completely as it does, the amount of OH minus which are also produced are equal to 0 0.05 molar. But this is OH. We agree that POH, this P means minus log. OH is the concentration of OH minus ions. So this turns out to be minus log, the concentration of, Z, I mean, it will be minus log, concentration of OH minus, which is equal to 0 0.05 molar, like this. So if you plug this into your um, calculator, you will see that minus log 0 0.05 is equal to 1.30. But this is pOH, not pH, of which we know that pH, we know that pH plus pOH, it all gives us 14. So we want pH, we're going to make pH subject to the formula. So it's going to be pH is equal to 14 minus pOH. We just found out that our pOH is equal to 1.30. So pH is going to be equal to 14 minus 1.30, which gives us 12.70, um, like this. So this is how we handle um, pHs and concentrations of materials which exhibit acidic or basic properties. Okay. So in a base solution like for example of this barium hydroxide, the difference here is going to be such that the barium hydroxide produces two OH minus ions, meaning that the ratio of 
the molecule to its conjugates is 1 is to 2. So, if the concentration of barium hydroxide is 0 0.5, 0 0.05, it means that the concentration of OH- is twice the quantity, so it's going to be 0 0.05 times 2, which gives us 0 0.1. So if you apply everything we have done there, so the POH is going to be now minus log of 0 0.1, which gives you 1. And then if you take it to pH plus POH minus 4 is, is equal to 14, where pH will be 14 minus POH, of which our POH here is 1, it will give you pH is equal to 13. Okay. So I know a lot of you, you struggle with these calculations um, in an exam and also uh, applying appropriate interpretations of the data you have or the interpretations of the values you would have obtained from experimental data. It is very important for us to know how to carry on with these uh, calculations. Now, everything changes when you are dealing with weak acids and weak bases. Because though their concentrations, they are not clear cut as we observe with strong acids and strong bases. I'll emphasize on that as we continue to, uh, with our interpretation. So, you will see that um, uh, with weak acids, the dissociation of the acid is just partial, meaning that the material holds on to the bulk of its H plus ions, which it's, it, we expect it to give away uh, according to the Brownstead and Lowry uh, definitions of acids and bases where we say that a, an acid is a proton donor. So now a substance is contain, contains a protons in its molecule but when it is dissociated in water it holds on to the bulk of its protons and sparingly or partially um, gives away the protons. So we can measure the degree to which the protons are being released into solution by carrying out a, 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 a technical calculation uh, of, of, of the pH of that material. So this is what we are going to do or I want you to take a closer look of the changes in the steps of applications we are going to do here. So take for example where the hydronium ion and pH can be calculated from the initial concentrations of the acid and its Ka value. So we want to use this as our specific example. We are saying we have got a, a weak acid, acetic acid, which has got a concentration of 0 0.1 molar and its Ka value is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the power minus 5. Remember yesterday uh, we agreed that um, from your acid dissociation constant expression if you plug in the values of the concentrations of the species at equilibrium you will find Ka value and we say that the Ka value is not just a value for design it means something really deep where we agree that the size or the magnitude of Ka tells you whether the substance is a strong acid or a strong base or it's a weak acid or a weak base. And how do you do that? If, I rem if you remember very well, you realize that we said if the Ka value is, um, is large, something like 1, 2, 3, up to 500 or 700, whatever the value you can determine, or 56, that means this material is a strong acid or a strong base. But if the Ka value is very, very small, less than zero, I mean less than one, sorry, less than one, then you will know that it's a weak 
base or a weak acid. So how do you know that if you take a look at this value, this is 1.8 times 10 to the power minus 5, meaning that if I am to write it a, in an ordinary form, it's going to be 0 0.12345, like this. So very, very small number, almost insignificant. And you are saying where, where, it, where you can pick it up from the table, it's written as 1.8 times 10 to the power minus 5. So, boys and girls, I'm telling you, from my experience, I've seen a lot of you struggling to make an intelligent interpretation of this value as compared to this. This tells you that the value is very, very small, far less than 1. So, for that reason, it means that it's a very weak acid okay? or a weak base. So, we are saying that this is the initial concentration of acetic acid and the Ka value is 1.8 times 10 to the power minus 5. So, how do we go about calculating the concentrations of the materials? Ladies and gentlemen, we are answering this question. We are saying the pH, the concentration of H plus and pH of this substance can be calculated or determined using the ice table. So how do we go about it? I think by now you are quite familiar with this. So we are saying that here is our acetic acid breaking down in water. It produces the hydronium ion or the H plus and the conjugate base over there. So the initial concentration is 1. For the acetic acid, it's 0 for the hydronium ion and 0 for the, um, for, the, for, the, for the conjugate base there, the acetate. So the change in the concentrations is it breaks down. And remember, we are saying it's breaking down sparingly or partially. So we are going to use minus x to represent the amount of change in concentration as it, as it breaks down. And then the amount of H plus ions is also going to be equally the same. So if the same amount which uh, is lost here is the same amount which is gained over there. Okay. So at equilibrium, we are going to have 0 0.1 minus x, this and that. While 0 plus x, it gives us x. 0 plus x, it gives us x. So if you write down the equilibrium expression, you find out that it's going to be Ka is equal to the concentration of the hydronium ion times the concentration of the acetate over the concentration of the acetic acid. Okay. If you plug in uh, the values at equilibrium, only the values at equilibrium. So you see that at equilibrium, the concentration of the acetic acid is 0 0.1 minus x, while that of the hydronium ion is x and the acetate ion is x. So x times x is x squared. x times x is x squared. And we are saying that from our table of uh, constants, Ka for an acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the power minus 5 under standard conditions. So, you are now dealing with this mathematical expression. But, it's not just simple and direct like this. How are we going to go about carrying out this calculation? If you are very good in mathematics, and you know how to play around with terms across the equal sign, you are tempted to shift this to that side and end up with a quadratic equation, which says x squared minus, I mean, y is equal to x squared plus c. But that's not how we are going to approach a, the calculations involving weak acids and weak bases. There is an intelligent interpretation you are expected to do or to know as you perform this calculation. So follow me through this clearly so that uh, what I am going to do here will make sense to, to you. So we are saying that con calculating the concentration of the hydronium ion or H plus ions from initial concentration and Ka, we use what we call the approximation method. 
I don't know if your teachers have emphasized this before, but you are expected to know this approximation method where it comes to weak acids and weak bases. So how do we make this approximation? Boys and girls, we are saying, solving for x in the expression for Ka, we have got our equilibrium expression and the substitutions we have done where we now have a mathematical representation of the equilibrium expression. So what are we saying? We are now saying, according to the approximation method, since this Ka value is very, very, very small, small such that it's, it's, a, it's a very small value compared to the concentration, to the initial concentration of the weak acid. Meaning that if this is very, very small, x, the value of x, this x, is going to be very, very smaller than 0 0.1, such that when you subtract it, it's not going to make a huge difference. It's going to be kind of an insignificant change. So much such that we can safely say 0 0.1 minus x approximate to 0 0.1. So it's not an issue of we are just ignoring x. No, we are not ignoring it. We are considering it, but we are considering that it's a very, very small value, which is almost insignificant in as much as it exists. So in its a small value, we can approximate that this subtraction, if you round it off again, it will still bring you back to 0 0.1. So for that reason, 0 0.1, 0 minus x, we will now approximate 0 0.10. So if we come back to our mathematical expression here, we are going to say this is going to be x squared over 0 0.1 minus x, which now approximate to x squared over 0 0.1. So for that reason, this becomes 1.8 times, I mean, will be equated to 1.8 times 20 to the power minus 5. So if you make your x squared subject of the formula, it becomes x squared is equal to 0 0.1 times 1.8 times 10 to the power minus 5, which is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the power minus 6. This is x squared, so we find the square root of this. So x becomes the square root of 1.8 times 10 to the power minus 6, which is equal to 1.34 times 10 to the power minus 3. But we want to find the concentration of um, the concentration of the H plus ions or the hydronium ions. And what it simply means is that the concentration of the hydronium ion is equal to X and is also equal to 1.34 times 10 to the power minus 3. So now that we now have the concentration of the hydronium ion, we can find pH where pH is equal to minus log the concentration of the hydronium ion, which is equal to minus log 1.34 times 10 to the power minus 3, which gives us 2.873, which shows that this is a weak acid. Okay. So we can continue to have more examples of these um, uh, calculations and go on to do percentage ionization and increase with dilution. Uh, those things, they are, you are not expected to know them, but you can have similar examples where you apply the same principle and the calculations where you are given nitrous acid, a very weak acid, with a Ka value of 4 times 10 to the power minus 4. You can see that it's a very, very small number, 0 0.00004. Okay, at 25 degrees, and you're expected to calculate the pH and the percentage ionization in a 0 0.1 molar solution. So if you carry out your calculations, just like what we did here, like what we did all this way, this, you will see that um, a, if you use the ice table for this, you will see that the pH going to be 2.20. In a similar manner, for chlorous acid, you can see the, P, the Ka value is to the power minus 8, a very, very small number. Uh, in a similar calculation using a, 
uh, unstable, it will give you pH is equal to 4.23. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to a practical examination question where we are expected to show an understanding of this phenomenon. Let's go back to our 2008 May-June paper, question 7, where we are applying this acid-base equilibrium. Okay. So we've got a reaction between sulfuric acid solution and a sodium hydroxide solution uh, and is investigated using this apparatus. Ladies and gentlemen, I also have this apparatus here and we are going to demonstrate the experiment which they are explaining here. And then we will try and show an understanding of what we are going to do. So, if we read through this um, experiment, you can actually see that they are talking, we, we can pick up the reagents we are supposed to use here. So let's see, we, they, they have identified a reaction between sulfuric acid. So this is sulfuric acid, okay? And it's reacting with sodium hydroxide. So this is our sodium hydroxide. So for some of you who do not have enough materials in your classrooms, you don't, uh, you don't usually do experiments. So I'm going to give you a quick demonstration so that you appreciate what's happening here. Uh, because this is a practical examination question. And we are going to set up our things like this. So a retort stand, here is a retort stand, as you can see here, with a clamp. And here is a clamp which is used to hold the burette. And here is our burette. As you can see, our burette over there. And then in the burette, we are going to put sulfuric acid. And then um, in the flask here, we are going to put sodium hydroxide. So I've got my flask here. Here is my flask. So let me bring this closer and show you exactly how we operate this, uh, this equipment. I want you to take note of the adjustments I'm making here. I'm doing them deliberately to give me space to maneuver uh, as I will be operating this. Right. So here we are. This is a white tile or, or a filter paper. I'm putting it here deliberately because uh, I want to have a clear observation of the little color changes that is going to take place as I will be titrating there. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, when you are operating this setup, so we now have everything here, the LNMA flask, um, sodium hydroxide, like we have there. So there we are. Before we actually do this, uh, you, can, you are going to notice that we are going to use a an indicator, and the indicator we are going to use here is called bromo meth thymoil blue. So here it is, bromo thymoil blue. So everything we, which is being represented here on the examination question, we have it practical. So my point here is, we really struggle to answer these questions because we do not uh, relate the practical situation to the theory which is presented in a question during an examination. So we struggle to comprehend and relate to what is actually happening there. But you see that it's very easy for you to appreciate what is happening or what is being represented here when you know very well that you have done the experiment before and you can still uh, understand the step-by-step -step representations of what is uh, being asked there. So here is, um, I'm going to make a quick uh, demonstration of this experiment and then answer the questions. So boys and girls, let's see what we are going to, to have here before we perform the experiment. 
um, the first question is asking us, um, write down the name of the experimental procedure illustrated above. This is just one mark. So immediately you see this kind of a setup. What comes to your mind? You have seen it in your textbooks and your teachers maybe have demonstrated this on, a, on the teacher's table while you are observing what is happening. So you can actually see that this is a simple titration set up for volumetric analysis of um, a, a substance which is unknown, unknown in terms of its concentration. Okay. So now the question is, what is the function of the buried? This buried, what is its specific function? Look, there's one mark to that, so you are not expected to write a long story. You just put it simple and straightforward where we are saying that it is to measure the exact volume of an acid needed to reach the end point. So here we, we, we know how much of a substance we are putting in here, but we don't know how much of the other substance we need to bring this other substance into a complete reaction or to react completely. So for us to determine how much is needed, so this is going to be an acid-base neutralization reaction. So we're going to have a base in this and a, an acid in there. So we, we know how much of our base we are going to put in there, but we don't know how much of an acid do we need to neutralize the base there. So when we run this reaction, reach an end point, observe a color change, then we'll be able to determine how much of the acid do we need. So the purpose of a burate, it helps us to measure the exact quantities or volumes of an acid needed to reach the end point to neutralize the base. Okay. Now the next question, they say, define an acid in terms of Arrhenius theory. If you remember yesterday when I introduced this whole concept, we started by definition of terms. We defined an acid and base according to Arrhenius, according to Brownstead Lowry, and according to Lewis. Where we, according to Arrhenius, we observed, uh, I mean, we, we picked up that an acid is a substance that increases the concentration uh, of the H plus ions in water. So in other words, it's a substance that produces the hydronium ions in solution or when dissolved in water. So the technical words which you are supposed to know all the time is that inc increase of the H plus ions, formation of the hydronium ion, and the substance should be dissolved in water. So if you just say it's a substance that increases the concentration of the hydronium ion, it's not good enough. Because according to Arrhenius, acidity or basicity can only be exhibited when the substance is dissolved in water. So without water, you cannot uh, think of coming up with a hydronium ion. Okay. So that's for two marks. Now give a reason why sulfuric acid is regarded as a strong acid. So from our previous discussions, you can easily pick up that theoretically, we are saying sulfuric acid is a strong acid because it ionizes completely and very fast, okay? So here's the situation uh, which is gonna take us straight to the titration we are going to demonstrate here. They are saying that bromomethyl, I mean bromothymoyl blue is used as an indicator and I said we do have it here. Exactly bromothymoyl blue. And write down the color change that will take place in the Ellen Mayer flask on reaching the end point of the titration. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very tricky question in as much as it carries one mark. Uh, it, it is very tricky because if you didn't do the experiment during the course of your studies, 
you are going to find it a little bit tricky to determine uh, the color changes which you are expected to take place here. So the first thing is, do you even know the initial color of this bromo thymoil blue? So I can, I can quickly show you uh, by putting a drop on a white um, a filter paper, like this one, so that you see the initial color of bromothymoil blue. Here it is. Its name is bromothymoil blue, but it does not look blue here. But we want to see it. if we put it in sodium hydroxide, is it going to remain with this green color or it will change to blue? We, don't, we, wanna, we are going to see that as, as we carry out the reaction. Now, here is the important part. If you take a look at this, all these questions, they were carrying one, one, two, one, 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 max. But the questions we are going to address now, I want you to see, they've got four max, so seven max, meaning that there is important information you are supposed to deal with here. Okay. So we are saying that during the titration, Elena adds 25 cubic centimeters of sodium hydroxide of concentration 0.1 mol per dm cubed to an LNMA flask and titrates this solution with sulfuric acid of concentration 0.1 molar. And then the balanced equation of the reaction that takes place is this. So boys and girls, here is the million dollar um, question. Do we know how to prepare a 0.1 mol dm cubed solution of sodium hydroxide? Do we know how to prepare 0.1 mol dm cubed solution of sulfuric acid? We are going to make a quick dilution and preparation of, um, of these solutions. So I'm going to rinse out uh, this large LNMA flask. Okay. And clean it like this. So I'm going to prepare my sodium hydroxide solution here. I'm also going to clean this one. We are supposed to have these things in volumetric flasks but we don't have a volumetric flask here, so we are just going to improvise for the sake of demonstration. So if we, we, we want to make a dilution here, we are going to use the same formula we used, or we, in, we know uh, it helps us to make dilutions of solutions. And I'm going to perform the calculations here on the board and uh, we will keep on making specific reference to them. Okay. So I'm going to do dilution of sulfuric acid here. Uh, like that. So we are saying C1, V1 is equal to C2, V2. I want to make a 100 mil solution. So my next volume is going to be 0 0.1 dm cubed. And then the concentration I want to make here is going to be 0 0.1 molar, 0 0.1 molar. So I want to, so the initial concentration of sulfuric acid here, it's 18 molar. So this is going to be 18 molar. I want to find out what is the volume I need to transfer to 100 mils of water. So I'm going to make V1, subject of the formula, and say 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 over 18. Those with calculators, we can quickly uh, do this calculation. So it's not a sophisticated uh, calculation, but uh, I want us to determine this, you and me, so that during practice you can uh, master this thing. So we are saying 0 0.1 times 0 0.1, it gives you 0 0.01. So 0 0.01 
divided by um, 0 0.01 divided by 18. Let's see what does it give us. 0 0.01 divided by 18 equals to 0 0.00055. So if we multiply this by a thousand, it will give you 0 0.5 milliliters. So you are going to measure 0 0.5 milliliters and put them in 100 mils, it will give you um, a concentration of 0 0.1 molar. Okay, so this is for sulfuric acid, okay? Let's do the same for dilution of uh, sodium hydroxide. We are saying C1V1 is equal to C2V2. I'm going to make my solution in 100 mu, so it's going to be 0 0.1 dm cubed. And then the concentration is going to be 0 0.1 molar. And then the initial concentration of sodium hydroxide we have here is 0 0.5 molar. So this is 0 0.5 molar. So I want to find out what is the initial volume I need here. So we are saying V1 is equal to 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 over 0 0.5. So we agree that 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 is equal to 0 0.5. 0, 0.01 divided by 0 0.5. What does this give us? Uh, those of you who have got calculators, um, you will see that um, it will give us, let's see, 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.5 equals to 0 0.02 times a thousand. It will mean we, we need 20 mils. So if I put 20 mils in 100 milliliters, it will give me 0 point, uh, 0 0.1 mole. Okay, so let's quickly do that and then we do our calculations as quickly as possible. Okay, let me bring a smaller measuring cylinder. Oh my. So for smaller measurements, I'm going to use this small uh, measuring cylinder uh, for the sulfuric acid. So I'm going to put 0 0.05 milliliters in 100 ml. So let me rinse all my beakers I and mean my measuring cylinders like this. So for 0 0.05, it's going to be a very small quantity up to there. Okay. Right. So there we are. So we know that all the time you add acid to water not water to acid. So here I'm going to measure um, 20 mils, okay, and put them here. So I now have water in there. I'm now adding acid to water, not water to acid, okay. There we are. So I'm going to rinse uh, the remaining acid there. Okay. 
I'm trying to collect all the remaining acid. So this is 20 mils. I'm going to add eight. Okay, so let's put it there. Let's add the water like that. Right. So I'm adding 89.5 like that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to label this 0 0.1 molar sulfuric acid. Okay, here we are, 0 0.1 molar H2SO4. There we are. Right. So let me rinse this again. I'm going to use this, uh, no, not necessarily. I can just put 20 ml of hydrochloric of sodium hydroxide here. Let me put away this. So I'm going to put 20 ml of sodium hydroxide and then top it up to 100 like this. So my 20 is going to be here. Okay, so there is my 20 milliliters of um, sodium hydroxide. But under normal circumstances, you're supposed to use a pipette and a volumetric flask to prepare these solutions. A volumetric flask and a pipette to transfer your solutions. But this is just a rough... Uh, So here we are. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to label this zero point one molar of sodium hydroxide. Okay. So to start our reaction, uh boys and girls, I'm going to transfer 25 mL of sodium hydroxide here. And then I'm going to transfer, um, sorry, I'll do this, sulfuric acid into a burette. Again, um, boys and girls, it's advised, advisable to always use um, a funnel when you are transferring uh, substances, especially this procedure I am going to do here. So because I don't have a funnel, I'm going to improvise and use this. Uh, like this. Okay. I'm 
I'm going to overshoot the meniscus a little bit so that I run it down here and see what's going to happen. Okay. Right. Now I'm going to take my initial burette reading here. So for me to take a nice uh, measurement, I need to put a white background like this. And then I can, you are expected to approximate uh, your values here to two decimal places. So you are not going to tell me that the value of this is exactly one or exactly 0 0.5. You are not a machine. You, you, you cannot make such precise measurements. You can only approximate. So if I'm to approximate this one, it's going to be 0 0.1235. So my initial burette uh, reading is going to be uh, 0 0.35 milliliters. Okay. Now I bring my uh, sodium hydroxide. I'm going to put just two drops of the bromo thymol blue indicator. Like this. You see, it looks green, but if I put it into sodium hydroxide, it turns blue. Let me add another droplet. Right, so far I've put four droplets of bromo thymol blue. So if I put it under a white tile like this, you can actually see the blue color, okay? Now I'm going to start the titration. Always you use your left hand to control the opening here while you use your right hand to vigorously stir continuously like this. So now here I am, I'm starting my titration. So this is my initial reading. I cannot randomly run through things. I am going to do it gently so that I can keep track of exactly where the color change is going to take place. A permanent, I'm targeting a permanent color change. So I'm adding this drop by drop and I'm making sure that all the drops of the so of the sulfuric acid are going down into the solution, not onto the sides of the container. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's keep going. The blue color is not yet changing. That means I'm still a long way away from the end point. So I need, oh, there we are. See, it has changed from, uh, from, from blue to this orange color. So we can consider this as a rough estimate because I was not so careful and uh, I didn't know which value am I getting to, which is taking me closer to the end point. So I'll consider this as my rough estimate. So let's see how much volume of the sulfuric acid have I used. So here we are. This is something like 12.85. So I've used a, now my, my, my measurement is 12.85 milliliters. So how much of the sulfuric acid did I use to bring uh, the color change here? So if I subtract this, this is zero. Eight minus three, it's five. And this gives me 12.5. So what it means is that I need 
according to this, I need 12.5 milliliters of sulfuric acid to completely neutralize 25 mils of, um, of, of, of sodium hydroxide. Is it true or does it make sense? We can, we can, uh, uh, we can actually try to see if this is uh, making sense by considering the, the reaction itself. So we are saying sodium hydroxide plus sulfuric acid. It gives us um, sodium sulfate plus H2O, right? So do you see that something is not right here? One sodium sulfate, I mean sodium hydroxide, does not react like this. We will need two of these. So that means we need two sodium hydroxide molecules. So we are saying the ratio here is two is to one. We need two sodium hydroxides to react with one sulfuric acid molecules. And from our volumes, we put 25 mils here. 25 mils. And if you check what we have just uh, calculated, uh, 24 point, um, I mean 20, so it's 12.85 minus a 0 0.35. So you see that it, will give, it gave me 12.5. Do you see that? Half of 25 milliliters is 12.5. So it clearly shows that uh, what I've done here in as much as it was rough, but it was precise enough to show me that we need two of these to react with one of that. Two is to one, two is to one. 25 mils of sodium hydroxide, 12.5 mils of sulfuric acid, exactly uh, representing the situ uh, situation I have here. Okay, so going back to our equation quickly, uh, now that we now know how a titration is carried out, we are going to find out a how do we answer these questions to get four marks and these questions to get seven marks? So they are saying, the first part is saying, if you consider this balanced equation where you've got two moles of sodium hydroxide reacting with one mole of sulfuric acid to give us one mole of sodium sulfate and two moles of water, determine the volume of sulfuric acid which must be added to neutralize the sodium hydroxide in the Ellen Mayer flask completely. I think we have done that experimental but we can carry out the calculation from that so from this we are saying if one two moles of this reacts with one mole of sulfuric acid so if we are to put 25 mils in there that means we need 12.5 okay so for four marks you have to i determined it using the experiment but you are expected to to determine it using calculations so you are expected to perform those calculations uh, consistently and show an understanding of how much you are supposed to do. so how do you carry out those uh, those calculations okay so there is two methods of doing that which i'm going to show just one of those methods quickly so remember we know that um, concentration is equal to number of moles over volume. And from, our, from what we have here, we, we already, we can determine the number of moles by simply saying number of moles is equal to concentration times volume. So for this one, we, for the sodium hydroxide, we already know that the volume is 25 mils, sorry, 25 mils and the concentration is 0 0.1 so if we change this to dm cubed um, you can find out that this becomes 0 0.025 if you multiply this it gives you 0 0.0025 like this and then if you compare 
the concentrations of sulfuric acid, you will see that we don't know the volume of sulfuric acid. So if we are to compare this, we can say if concentration times volume uh, of sulfuric acid is equal to the number of moles of the acid over the concentration times volume of the base is equal to the number of moles of the base. If you substitute the values in there, you will find out that this will also give you uh, 12.5 milliliters. Okay. So you'll be saying 0 0.1 times V over 0 0.1 times um, 25 mils. And the number of moles of acid is 1. And the number of moles of sodium hydroxide is 2. And it will give you 12.5 milliliters. Okay. So that is for 4 marks. Now the next part is saying if the learner passes the end point by adding 5 mils of the same uh, sulfuric acid in excess, calculate the pH of the solution. Uh, boys and girls, this is a very simple application, but we know very well that it's easy for you to mix up things. So I'll quickly show you a simple and straightforward method of, of calculating how you can do that. Okay. So let's do it like this. You will see that um, for us to determine the member is adding five mils of this in excess, more than what is actually needed, of which we know that the Na in excess is equal to concentration times a times the volume, of which the excess that have been added is 5 mils. 5 divided by 1,000 to change it to dm cubed, it becomes 0 0.005. So this becomes, the concentration is 0 0.1 times 0 0.005, which will give you a 5 times 10 to the power minus 4. Okay? So with this, what do we do? We measure the amount of ions, I mean, of H plus ions which are produced there. So you will see that this becomes the number of H plus will be equal to, uh, the number of moles of H plus ions will be equal to 2, uh, the number of moles of the acid. Okay. So which becomes a 2 times 5 times 10 to the power minus 4. So this gives you 1 times 10 to the power uh, minus 3. So from this 1 times 10 to the power minus 3, we, we want to find now the concentration of the H plus ions. So the concentration of the H plus excess ions is going to be, so since this is number of moles, we'll say 1 times 10 to the power minus 3 divided by the volume where our volume is equal to a, it will now be 4.25 um, times 10 to the power minus 2. So it will be 4.25 times 10 to the power minus 2. When we multiply, when, if you take your calculator and you punch these numbers, you see that the concentration is going to be equal to 2.36 times 10 to the power minus 2. So this is concentration, 2.36 times 10 to the power minus 2. We want to find the pH. So pH is equal to minus log the concentration of H plus ions. So if we say minus log of this, it will give you the pH is equal to uh, 1.63. Okay. So you will see that depending on your approach and understanding of the information you have here, you can carry out a simple and direct calculation. And for this, boys and girls, you can get seven marks for simply uh, laying out your calculation step by step like that. Okay. So when we meet next time, we are going to move on to electrochemistry and see how we can make use of equilibrium to account for 
electrochemical applications. Thank you very much.